Friends of the Great Plains Conference, the grace and peace of Jesus Christ be with your spirit. We begin our season of Lent tomorrow, commonly referred to as Ash Wednesday. Lent is my favorite time of the Christian year. I like to think of the Lenten season as my spiritual tithe. That is, the Lenten season is a portion of the calendar year when I intentionally seek to find additional time to intensely focus my, my thoughts on the sacred listening of Scripture as I seek to encounter God afresh and follow Christ through His passion on the way to the cross, through His death and His resurrection. I discovered and reclaimed the spiritual richness of Lent 25 years ago through my seminary studies and my own personal pilgrimage that led me to reconcile my Protestant upbringing with my upbringing within an extremely dense and palpable Roman Catholic culture. Over the years, I have found and continue to find and draw immense strength and direction in ministry by reflecting on the passion of Christ. When I pastored local congregations, the Lenten season became a time to lead people into deeper spiritual growth and renewal by following Jesus' passion up close and personally. So I want to offer all of you an opportunity to take part in a time of spiritual growth and renewal as a conference by participating in a daily, self-directed Lenten spiritual retreat that will deepen our spiritual practices and discipleship. I'm naming this process and this walk by his side. The Gospel of Matthew records that Peter followed at a distance after Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. Peter would soon deny Jesus three times when asked about his relationship to Jesus. During this year's Lenten season, let us not follow Jesus at a distance. Let us walk by His side as we follow a new scripture reading and theme for each day of Lent. The new scripture and theme will be posted daily on our Great Plains Facebook page. The selected scriptures and theme word will guide our walk from the plot to kill Jesus, His passion and death, to His resurrection from the tomb on Easter. More importantly, the daily scripture and theme word will guide our contemplation, meditation, prayer, and journaling. While we can read the scripture of the day and theme word in a minute or so, I'm inviting you to go deeper in your spiritual life this Lent. I'm inviting you to set aside 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, or maybe even an hour at the start of each day for the next 46 days of Lent, beginning this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday to exercise your spiritual life through the practice of Lectio Divina, or what is referred to as divine reading. I'm also inviting you to set aside an additional 5 to 30 minutes at the end of each day to enter your spiritual gleanings of the day in a Lenten journal of your choosing. I use something like this at the end of every day to reflect on my day, and I will use it during Lenten season at the end of each day to reflect on how I've experienced and encountered God uh, through this journey of following Jesus by His side. Lectio Divina may sound new to many that are viewing the video. In simple terms, Lectio Divina is a contemplative way of reading the Bible. The practice dates back to the early centuries of the Christian Church and was established as a monastic practice by Benedict in the 6th century. Lectio Divina is not a Bible study method. It is a way of praying the scriptures that leads us deeper into God's Word and into encounter with the living God. It is a means of God's grace that brings about the transformation of our lives in all sorts of ways and levels. Whenever I practice Lectio Divina, I follow the six elements or movements suggested by Sister Macrina Whitaker in her book, Song of the Seed, A Monastic Way of Tending the Soul. I have used the Song of the Seed resource for over 25 years to create for myself countless spiritual oases that have sustained my spiritual life and passion for life and ministry. The exercises in the book allow me to experience a 10-day spiritual retreat as needed that nourishes my soul without the need to vacate my daily work. The Song of the Seed devotional book process have served me well as a guide for self-directed in-home spiritual retreats, if you will. Sister Whitaker likens Lectio Divina to romancing the Word of God. She says that when we romance the Word of God, we pursue the Word and it pursues us. 
Romancing the Word of God unfolds the mysteries of God before us that leads us then along our sacred pathway in life. The six Lectio Divina elements suggested by Sister Whitaker, renamed for our purposes, are number one, preparation. This normally takes about five minutes. This is a time prior to reading and contemplation when we seek to still ourselves before God as we unclutter our mind and unify our heart with God's heart. Next, it's reflective reading, about five minutes. This is our first reading of the day's scripture and theme word. We read scripture with, an ear, with the ear of our heart, contemplatively, slowly, and whenever possible, aloud. We let the word of God enter into our souls through our ears when we read aloud. The third element of Lectio Divina is contemplation. This can take 5 to 15 to even 30 minutes. You'll probably grow in your ability to do this as the Lenten season goes on. But this is a time when we rest and let God have us. It's a time for a patient waiting and a tender abiding in God's presence. We're not praying. We're simply listening to God speak to us. We're simply present in the moment as we're being held by God. The fourth element is meditation. Having read the Word, rested in the Word, now we are ready to interact with it. We return to the Scripture and read it again. In the second reading, we hold the Word. We study it. We listen to it. Sometimes we'll see things about ourselves that we would rather not see. We will feel vulnerable and grateful. But the vision of Lectio Divina it's not information, it is conversion and transformation of our inner life we so earnestly seek. The fifth element is prayer, five, ten minutes. Now that we have attentively listened to God speaking to us, it is time for us to speak to God and for God to listen to us. Our prayers can take many forms. We can use words to express praise, repentance, thanksgiving, or petition for God's graces and mercies. We can draw or do art or create something. We can pray wordlessly by sacred gestures, or maybe we may show tears or dance or break off in a song. Or we may just pray by taking a meditative walk. Trust me, you'll know how to pray and what to pray for when the time comes. Just open yourself to how the Spirit may be leading you to pray on that particular day. And don't be afraid. The sixth and final element Wiedeker suggests for the practice of Lectio Divina is journaling. As I mentioned before, journaling happens at the end of your day as you look back on it. I like to use the examined questions developed by St. Ignatius to reflect back on my day. I do this often. And the examined questions are, number one, where did I see God today? We look back and we review the day with gratitude. Question number two, what am I thankful for today? This is when we pay attention to our emotional life. What, what gives us joy and what brings us delight? Number three, what did I feel today as I walk through my day by the side of Jesus. Number four, what should I pray for at the end of the day? What is the Spirit leading me to ask or petition for or pray for or be open to? And number five, how do I feel about tomorrow? Now these five questions are simple questions, but, but they really get at the heart of being mindful of where God is encountering us on a day-to-day -day basis and our sensitivity to God's presence and God's working will be heightened. So after you spend time with your own journaling, read your journal entry. You may want to go back and read some of the journal entries from the previous days, and then find rest for the night. Our Facebook post each day will include a question that may help you with your reflection and journaling. But we especially hope that you will share your answer to the question as part of a Facebook thread. For more information about Whitaker's Lectio Divina process, please refer to her book, Song of the Seed, The Monastic Way of Tending the Soul. In addition to my conference-wide invitation to practice the spiritual discipline of Lectio Divina as the Great Plains 
Methodist community. Todd Seifert and I will produce a podcast that will be available for your listening and viewing beginning the Monday after Ash Wednesday and continuing through the first Monday after Easter. The podcast will feature a dialogue between Todd and I about Christ's seven last sayings on the cross and what they can mean for our life of faith and discipleship. I do hope you will enjoy the discussion and will grow from the reflection I share as we continue on our By His Side Lenten journey together. You won't want to miss it. I pray that you will join this year's Lenten pilgrimage as we follow Jesus by His side. By His side is not simply a following next to, but it connotes intimacy, deep friendship. It connotes compassion and even co-suffering with the one who suffers. It is a very profound term that invites us not just to observe Jesus objectively, but to be with Jesus subjectively as we walk with him to the passion, to the cross, and to the resurrection. It'll change your life. By doing this, we will faithfully walk the way of passion, death, and resurrection for ourselves and for the world God so deeply loves. God bless you. Have a sacred Lent. Peace. Please visit our Great Plains Conference Facebook page starting Ash Wednesday for the first scripture and theme word of the day. The scripture and theme word will be posted by 5 a.m. every morning during the Lenten season. Like and follow the page and share it with your family, friends, and co-workers. Answer the question each day. Make this a year for you to grow deeper in your faith practice and discipleship by practicing and using Lectio Divina to pursue and be pursued by the Word of God. God's grace and peace be with you.